Good morning and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jane Miller, um, Academy Programme Manager, and I am joined by William. William, I don't know if you want to do a bit of an introduction. Yeah, thank you, Jane. I'm William Bay and I'm up in Aberdeen. Jane, isn't it amazing how we can be talking about courageous leaders and you can be in one part of the country and I'm in another, what modern technology has given us. <laughs> Yes, and I'm in Glasgow as well, so it's nice to be doing a bit of a, a chat from different parts of Scotland. Um, so, William, I don't know if you want to give a bit of a, an introduction about your background um, before we start uh, into our questions. So, my background is that I've just finished uh, an HNC in animal care um, over the last year, but been involved in leadership in a uh, various number of roles. Um, right in, in Aberdeen, in Aberdeenshire, um, in the whole of Grampian almost, and nationally as well. That's great. So you've got lots of different perspectives on leadership. Yeah, totally. Um, so today um, we're going to be talking about courageous leadership in the context of health and social care, um, which is one of our academy's five provocations. Um, effective leadership is important for shaping health and social care sector and creating the right conditions for well-being. Um, and the aim of this series is to explore lessons, styles and aims from personal perspectives on leadership. Um, and I'm really pleased to be joined by William and to get your experience and your perspectives. So let's get started with our first question. So um, what does leadership mean to you? Leadership to me means that being that calm, cool head in a time of crisis or even just guiding some, uh, a plan or a project through being, being able to support and help others and always being there when people you know need that leadership in either like either work life or personal life or whatever they need that uh, role role of a leader to support them through life or through even their health and social care journey so it's important to see leadership as being something that is really dependent on the context that you're working in. Yeah, really dependent on the context you're working in, also dependent on the person and tailoring it to their needs and making sure that the person's always at the centre and using the pen person centre tools. And what personal values and principles are important to you? Is being yourself important? Yeah, being myself is very important. Also, not promising the world as well so if you can't deliver being honest and saying that that's something that i can't deliver on but i know someone who can so being able to signpost being able to realize as well as a leader that sometimes you know your time's not going to be your own that you are going to be knocking in maybe 16 17 hour days but also not forgetting to take time for yourself and just you know not forgetting that time for yourself as well as the R&R &R that you may need as a leader but being honest being fair being kind being upfront being being genuine everything you know you would expect from a leader to be supportive and all of that you talked a bit about kind of touching on self-care there is there anything you think would be a good good way of a leader ensuring that they're able to take care of themselves I would say what I found, what I found important um, to me was always having a diary and almost planning out things and making sure that I had, like I take a Wednesday morning as my protected morning, but it's just mine. I don't book anything in. I don't do anything that, you know, is in a leadership role. I'll do other things, you know, I'll attend a local coffee shop for a breakfast, you know, and take time out and I won't have my phone or or I'll be away from all IT gadgets and everything so that I've got that time to, to regenerate and just really think things through. Yeah, and it's important as well to take that space for yourself so that you can give yeah. that space to others. Yeah. So what can make it difficult to be a courageous leader and, and what can help overcome some of these challenges? The one thing I found uh, making it difficult to be a courageous leader is that the barriers of where I obviously have got underlying health conditions, people have said, oh, well, you can't, you can't do that because of X, Y, and Z. But I've always seen a way around that barrier and almost jumped over it. So like, I'm dyslexic, so folks like, I'll, instead of having stuff on white, I'll have it on yellow. 
you know, I'll I'll try and find that that adaptations. And as a leader, you know, you always want to try and find those adaptations or little nuggets of experience you've picked up from your own life or from others that you've maybe seen in, in leadership. Do you think that um, there's any way that people can be supported to kind of have that have that thinking earlier so that they've already had those those considerations? There's anything they can do to make it easier to support people? And what do you mean by that and what in what context in that question? So I suppose in terms of making adaptations, if somebody is maybe creating a leadership program or they're starting something, how can they make sure they're thinking about the needs of everyone involved? What could they do maybe to begin with to support people? I would say to start, always make sure that you ask individuals on a one-to-one -one basis, you know, what, what support would you, do you need or, or require? You know, what adaptations do you currently use? What adaptations can we, you know, put in to support you? And genuinely go over, go over and above, you know, what what you would normally do for an app. I'm not going <laughs> to try and think of a different word from app to an individual, but go over and above and what you would do for yourself. You know, what would you expect if you were attending a program? You know. I think that's really important. It kind of goes back to what you were saying in the first question about being really pers person centered yeah. um, and thinking about it from an individual perspective. And also, as well, just thinking about, um, yeah, how would you feel when you attend something um, and you want, how do you want to feel as well and how important that is? You would um, want, I sorry. suppose, when, I, when attending something, you'd want to feel like you were the only person in the room, that whatever you were at was aimed directly at you, but it could be millions of people in the room but the, you know that you're the center of the room at that time you feel as though you're getting a good quality out of it a really good quality it's experience a good quality experience because i suppose before the pandemic we were all traveling up and down left and right going to conferences and that and we wanted to get a good quality experience and if we we're looking at post-pandemic now and developing things like that again or even looking at stuff online as, as leaders want to look to see how as well forget not forgetting that there are people out there who are digitally excluded who maybe can't use technology and offering them that extra support of their technology and seeing where we can support them there I think that's a really good point, isn't it? As you said, like with the pandemic, yeah. we've got, even today we're thinking about how good it is that we can have our conversation and you're in Aberdeen and I'm in Glasgow, but yeah. actually being really mindful that not everyone's having the same experience. Oh. I think that's so important to, to yeah. remember and, and adapting to people's individual experiences so they can feel included in part of something. Yep. So that would, I suppose, as well be a major challenge, you know, get to get to those who are digitally excluded. Mm -hmm. Um, and throughout your journey, what or who has inspired you or influenced the way that you approach leadership? What's inspired me in a few people um, is that certainly one person I can think of is whenever there was a, a time, a meeting we were at, um, and the technology just completely wouldn't play ball. Um, and that this person just kept the room laughing and joking you know, would, would, you know, looked up at one point and says, oh, there's now a phone call going on. We've now got a technical expert in the phone, you know, and was giving air guitars and, you know, showing off a ACDC. Another, another, another one is somebody always said to me who was in, who until recently um, was in a leadership role before uh, stepping down and taking retirement, always said, make sure you've got everybody behind you. So you could have somebody coming in um, or seeing somebody for maybe only five minutes a week. Make sure if you're making a decision that they are behind you and that they are 100% behind you as well. And always make sure that, you know, right up to top level people are all behind you. Because there's no point implementing a change with this person said, if the person is coming in for five minutes a week, says, oh, I doubt like that, you know, get everybody to make sure that they are liking it. The other the other person um, that I also quite admire in, leader, in a leadership role um, 
doesn't see any barriers or labels, just sees the person's time and their talent and their skills as a gift and, and harnesses them and uses them to their full potential. And also it helps with per you know, with mental health if if you're realizing somebody's gifts, times, talent, skills, they're gonna get that feel good feeling, which is then gonna make their mental health better and make them feel more wonderful. But I could I could go on, I could be here all day talking about everybody that I've seen on leadership roles and how they've influenced me and made me the person that you know, everybody that's had a leadership role in my life from my very first head uh, person that came into my life to everybody that's in my life now that's in a leadership role has not inspired me and influenced my style of leadership. I take a bit from everybody. I really like that. I think somebody once said to me, um, you take yourself with you when you go to a job or when you go anywhere. So it's quite nice yeah. to think that you take yourself places, but people also leave something with you. So that's yeah. that's a nice way to think about something. And important to think about all those different aspects of leadership and um, mm -hmm. you know, having support from colleagues or you know making you know make, making light of a difficult situation. Like we've all been there with a bit of tech drama. Um, so my last question maybe kind of falls on from some of the things you were saying in that question, but what piece of advice would you give someone who is looking to become a courageous leader? The piece of advice I would give is don't stop dreaming. If your dream is to be a courageous leader, don't stop. Go for it. You know, reach for the sky. The sky is the limit. You know, um, if I can do it, you can do it too. That's a really that's a really nice way to end. Um, I think that's a really yep. good determination and keeping keeping battling yeah. through as well. Go for Keep it. Battling through, you know, you'll hit wall after wall after wall, but just battle through. Because remember, as I said before, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I don't know if there's okay. anything else you want to leave as a bit of parting advice from the series. Do, um, I would say. Do, Remember, don't do what, don't do what I do, and don't take time for myself. Remember, even though you're a leader, um, you might be a top level chief exec, you might even be the first minister of Scotland. You know, you always need to remember and take time for yourself. Don't do what I do and go work and work and work and then burn out and go. Oops, maybe I should have taken some R and R time. Always remember that R and R time and remember to have everybody behind you and always have somebody that you can sound your worst idea off of and they'll laugh and go, ah, that's, a, that's the worst idea, you know? Or somebody who'll say, yeah, that's a brilliant idea and all that. So always make sure somebody is behind you and supporting you as well. I think that's definitely a perfect way to end our interview. Um, so thanks again for joining me, William, and um, okay. keep an eye out for future contributors as part of our series. Thank you. <laughs>